Well, hey guys, we are back in the H-Town. I just got back from my trip, but you're watching this like a week after the fact, but I hope you all enjoyed the vlogs in in Paris. I I enjoyed the talks, they were really good, you know. I, um, I've shared this in videos before, talking about how the, uh, how pol living in an area with a lot of pollution, how it, contributes to skin aging as well as a variety of problems and they were showing some interesting data on that at the meeting that I really enjoyed listening to you know people who live in more polluted areas they tend to have uh, people who have acne if they live in a more polluted area it tends to be more stubborn it's hard you know I live in Houston is actually has a, a lot of pollution especially certain areas like near the oil refineries and everything um, like it's you know it's definitely something that can lead to a lot of adverse health effects for sure um, but what people don't realize is the combination of the pollutants plus ultraviolet radiation from the Sun it's like a double hitter for your skin because pollution and pollutants they generate they lead to the formation of a lot of free radicals that damage structures and things in your skin and then UV does that as well plus UV suppresses the immune system in the skin so it really um, takes a number and skincare products you have to be careful they make a lot of agree you know loosey-goosey claims about blocking pollution there is a big push in the industry to start explore to explore uh, technologies and cleansing and products that will you know mitigate some of the deposition of pollutants or aid in removal of of that stuff uh, cleansing technologies and stuff like that there is definitely a put you know a lot of research going on for that but what all that to say you know, a lot of brands and stuff, they're going to make claims like that their product protects from pollution and it's like, prove it. Um, for example, I've seen not so much pollute, well, yeah, pollution claims, but also infrared radiation claims brands will make about their products that it protects from that stuff because their product has antioxidants in it. And it's like, you've got to prove that your product actually, the antioxidants in your product actually do help to fight off free radicals because it's definitely a formulation specific outcome and you know to what extent a product is able to do that they're not required to really demonstrate that. Anyways I'm on my way to Sprouts, haven't been there in a while. Oh man. Yeah I just like all things summer, I just think it's a there's more so there there are a lot of fun celebrations that are a lot more low-key in the summer there's you know fourth of july and labor day is the end of summer but it's just it's more laid back in the beginning in the fall in the beginning of winter of course you have all the holidays and everything but that is it just me? I find that a lot more stressful because there's just like certain traditions there and expectations. I don't know. I say all this, but for me personally, all that stuff is pretty low key because that's just how I run my life. I don't allow stuff like that to cause me stress. Um, I just don't. Life is too short to worry about whether or not you should put nuts in the potato salad or not. You know what I'm saying? Do people put nuts in their potato salad? I know they put nuts in their chicken salad. That's what I was really thinking. <laughs> um, but uh, in my case, it'd be my chickpea salad. Paula Dean has a recipe for a chicken salad, um, which you can use chickpeas in instead of chicken and vegan mayonnaise, but she puts grapes. Is it Paula Dean? I'm, I, I think she has a recipe and I know, uh, what's her name? Jeffrey's baby mama. <laughs> the, the barefoot Contessa. I'm almost certain she's got one where she puts the grapes in it. And see, I love, y'all know I love my fruits and vegetables. Grapes are a fruit that I could never ever eat again and I would be totally fine with. Like, I don't buy grapes typically. I just find them to be an underwhelming, like, 
it, here's the thing. I'm sure if I live somewhere where like they had some kind of signature grape that was like extra delicious i'd probably get into it but i know people go through phases where they're like really craving grapes they put them in the freezer and eat them caught i'm just not a great person grape person now give me some fake grape flavor i love it it's odd like i love fake grape flavor like grape kool-aid love uh grape soda love grape gum grape grape flavor which it doesn't taste anything like grape love that whereas other candy flavors of fruits I don't like like watermelon flavor I mean don't get me wrong I like watermelon chewing gum but like I prefer the actual watermelon fruit flavor like the fruit flavor never tastes like candies never actually taste like watermelon what's another fruit flavor that candies just don't seem to get right peach it's weird because my brain is so trained to recognize peach flavors, but they don't taste anything like actual peaches. Like I have unified, like you've unified the word in your brain, right? Peach, but you, your palate knows that they're to two different things, that it's not like you're actually eating the real peach or real peach flavor. But sometimes you'll get real peach flavor. I'm, I'm like, I don't even know what I'm on, you guys. Update. This Oventure ring was a good investment. Um, I just really love it. It's a silicone ring that you can keep your... It's got this nice key ring on it. But it's nice because you don't have to have, like, your keys flopping Looks like around. Sprouts has a clear spray, fragrance-free sunscreen. Now, if you're new here, the problem with sprays is that you don't really reliably put out enough sunscreen to give you a good film. You've got to do a couple of passes and then rub it in. But this one is a chemical sunscreen. It shouldn't leave a cast. Water resistant. And it has avocado oil in it, which is an emollient. That actually looks promising. And then don't spray it directly to your face. Spray it in your hands and then rub it in your face. Because you don't want to inhale. Alba Botanica's got their sport mineral here. I wonder how this compares to I wonder how this compares to the MD Solar Science Kids Mineral Sunscreen. Finding everything okay? Sure am, thank you. Looks like Alba Botanica has a sunless tanner. See, I was mentioning this recently in a video on DHA, but they don't disclose, they're like they're not gonna disclose the percentage of DHA in their product, but it's a safe ingredient to use. Wild Mint, that's an interesting selection for a fragrance, Alba. I don't think I've ever seen a mint scented product. Interesante. Ditch the itch, what is this? All terrain, colloidal oatmeal, soap, that looks promising. It does have eucalyptus leaf oil in it, which can be irritating, depending on Oh look, Badger came out with sunscreen. I think they've always had this zinc oxide sunscreen in a tin. Hmm. Check these out. Anti-plaque whitening toothpaste tablets. Is this like, instead of toothpaste in a tube for less packaging? Choose friendly. I wonder how reliable that is. I have my doubts. Check out the uh, hubcaps on this car. <gasps> oh my God, I'm kind of nervous to pull up close to them and I might scratch my car. There's even a spare tire with, with one. How ridiculous. Well, hey guys, excuse the hair. I just finished my run. No, I didn't run with my hair down. Which by the way, does anybody with, I don't know, long-ish, even chin length hair, can you stand running with your hair like completely down? I've seen people run that way and I do not understand how they can tolerate it. I can't even stand if my hair is like, even in a ponytail because the ponytail starts swishing back and forth and it ends up getting all tangled like a rat's nest. That's why I always like do that uh, claw clamp bun thing whenever I run. It just, otherwise it just go, yeah, it turns into a mess. One thing I was gonna update you guys on, this morning, as you guys saw, my sunscreen for today is a tinted Elta MD UV Restore. I, I like this sunscreen, it looks really nice on the skin. 
Wears pretty well, like just for a day to day. But one thing I had pointed out to you guys about this product is that if the sunscreen gets on your waterline of your eyes, it burns and stings. It doesn't burn or sting like on the eyelid skin. You can put it there comfortably, it's fine. However, one thing that I am starting to notice with this, and I, you know, I, I just have realized it over the past couple of times I've worn it, is that when I wear this to work out, because I've reapplied this throughout, the, I, I think I reapplied this once today. So wearing it to work out, like on the treadmill, when it gets, I don't know if it's when it's mixing with my sweat on my forehead, I start to get like an itchy, tight feeling forehead. I'm starting to think that sometimes, maybe for some people, this is just a theory, for some people, some of these antioxidants that they put in sunscreens, I think they could be the culprit problem for some people, I'm starting to think. Because, for example, um, just take vitamin C serums. For a lot of people, a vitamin C serum can be so irritating, it causes them to have acne breakouts. And I'm starting to think that some of the antioxidants that they put in sunscreens could potentially be a culprit, including the one in this product, because I, you know, I'm not saying it's the responsible for all people's issues with sunscreens, but I think it could definitely be a key thing. And it may be certain antioxidants. Maybe it just makes this formula just ever so slightly too irritating for some people. Now, other sunscreens use niacinamide, and a lot of you guys, you know, you don't get along well with niacinamide. I think that could be an issue for some people who haven't realized that niacinamide is problematic for them. The other one that is in a fair number of sunscreens will be like, I don't know, tea polyphenols. Maybe that's problematic for some people. So I, I'm just talking out loud here like, whoa, somebody had a deep conversation with themselves on the treadmill. Yep, <laughs> I sure did. But all that to say, I do like the sunscreen. I've been wearing it comfortably, but I am coming into some issues with it. The one being that kind of itchy sensation and two being if it gets on the waterline in my eyes, it burns. Um, but it doesn't, it doesn't pill or anything, but over certain um, moisturizers, because I did put on some moisturizer this morning, over certain moisturizers, I do get a little pilling with that. Which brings me to another point. Do you guys layer sunscreen on over moisturizer? If you do, one issue you can run into is that it can cause the sunscreen to pill up over that moisturizer. They can be incompatible. And once the sunscreen starts doing that, the areas where it's pilling up, you're not getting good protection. So I like sunscreens that I can just use as my standalone moisturizer. For example, that um, La Roche-Posay Youve Immune 400, that formula, I find moisturizing enough. Or the, uh, what is it I'm thinking of? The Black Girl Kids sunscreen is moisturizing enough. Like I don't need a separate moisturizer with that product. And I find that a lot of the water resistant ones are sufficiently moisturizing because they create this water resistant film that really reduces water loss, I believe, from the skin sufficiently to keep the skin from getting too dry. I just did my stretching there with my TheraBand. You guys, I've been really on top of that and it has made a huge difference. I think for me, I am really bummed with like my age related decline in flexibility. I'm, don't get me wrong, I keep up with stretching and everything and I'm not inflexible or anything, but compared to how I was as a teenager, it's like quite sad because I used to be super flexible. I mean, whatever, it's not like I'm, you know, looking to be in Cirque du Soleil or anything anytime soon, but it saddens me how much flexibility I've lost. But I say, I say that, but I realize I have traded it in for endurance because when I was doing ballet, don't get me wrong, ballet is an endurance thing. I had good endurance for ballet, but I wasn't running back then. I didn't, I told you guys this in a recent vlog. I didn't start running until 1999. And at that time I was still doing ballet, but um, later on, you know, I focused more on school. And so I didn't, I didn't do ballet. I got really into running though, because you know, you can do running anywhere and you don't have to, it's different, you know what I mean? Anyways. Um, and I think that's really when I stopped stretching as much to the same extent. I got so into running that I'm able to run really long distances. And so I realized that's, you know, a trade-off, stamina, cardiovascular. Um, <laughs> uh, so all that to say, um, 
yeah, I had a good workout. I work out every day, pretty much. Um, I walk, I run. I think people should exercise every day. You don't have to do something intense, but it's really important for longevity, like living a long, healthy life. I think that, I know, that is one reason why people lose their health as they get into their adulthood, not even older, older years, just adulthood. You know, people stop working out. They stop moving. They stop exercising. Maybe they don't like it, but it's so important for just your health, especially if you work a sedentary job, you've got to get moving. You've got to get moving. All right, you guys, I am going to write in my planner. I got some questions recently about, am I still using the Erin Condren planner? I am. This is the life planner that was from 2021 all the way till 2022. I have the uh, vertical layout, which I love, morning, afternoon, evening. So I love this. I love the paper quality. It's very good. However, one thing that has gotten on my nerves with this particular planner is that on Wednesdays, it becomes very difficult for me as a right-handed person to write in the planner on the Wednesday once I get down to this part. It's not a problem so much here, but it kind of is because you start butting up against this coil and it becomes difficult. But once you get down to the bottom of the column, you have a drop off here, which is not good for your wrist. This is like carpal tunnel waiting to happen. I mean, it's only one day a week for a few seconds, so I'm being dramatic, but it's impossible to, for me to write neatly in this little box on Wednesdays. So I don't like that, and that's really gotten on my nerves with this planner. But since I'm standing over here, one thing you need in your life, if you don't have this already, and you have a sink, and you eat off of plates, or drink out of cups, or bottles, or have knives that you clean, is this over the sink, drying rack. I have had this now for over a year. I need to put it in the dishwasher, which you can, but I love it because it just rolls up, takes up no space. Ignore my dirty sink. Actually, it's not too dirty. Um, it takes up no space. Keep stuff out of the way. It is, it is something that you need in your life. I do get questions about where this came from. So these gloves are also from Amazon. I love them. I use them to clean the sink and stuff. Um, <clears throat> I don't recommend them, however, if you wanna use them to, I don't recommend them for like washing dishes by hand cause you'll probably drop the dishes, but they're really good for just like scrubbing down your sink and stuff. Um, they're probably good for washing a car too. I would not know cause you guys know I do the drive through. Anyways, yeah, highly recommend those, but the little glove, holder rack, which I also love because when these get wet and soapy and drippy, I can just put them here and this collects the drips. I got this on Yes Style. Well, hey guys, I'm all out of the shower and looking shiny, shiny, shiny because I filmed my favorites video. I had this out in the living room. It's the CeraVe healing ointment. I recently finished a whole big tube of this and I, as you guys know, I cracked into this one for the Paris trip and I've been doing a little uh, to my eyelids and it's been it's been a love affair what can i say um but you may wonder what is this glistening glow i told you guys in the video that i filmed today how i've been into body slugging my arms and legs now a few months ago i was shopping in kroger with you guys over by the skincare and you may have recalled I found this product by Eucerin, and I've always said Eucerin does not make a bad product. And first I was like, essential oil balm, what? They're intensive repair, intensive oil balm. But, you know, I was freaked out because essential oils, like I think of lavender and fragrance oils, essential oils like tea tree oil, you guys know from my videos, it can be super irritating. But I think the naming, they don't mean essential oils, I think they just mean like skin essential oils, like not, you know what I mean? Like essential, essentials for skin. You get what I'm saying? Because there are no essential oils in this. It's got um, sunflower seed oil, which is a great emollient. It's got um, shea butter. Anyways, um, so I purchased this and I whipped it out a few days ago. I have been loving this um, as a kind of alternative to a petrolatum ointment. 
It doesn't have petrolatum in it, but what it is, is kind of like a hybrid between like a petrolatum ointment and a lotion, if you can even imagine it. I mean, I've never really used a product like this. Actually, the consistency is a bit like the um, this Japanese urea face cream, actually, kind of an oily balm consistent, kind of an oily consistency. It, 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 I've tried Japanese products that are this way. Um, they're, they're really oily and this, this actually reminds me of some Japanese products I've tried. Now that I'm thinking of it, it reminds me of that. It's got glycerin in it, which is a great humectant. Shea butter is the occlusive, but it's super emollient. It's, you know, if you want to do uh, kind of a medium version of slugging, you might try this. If you like oils and skincare, but you know, oils are, they're, they're not really great at locking in hydration, but you like them, try something like this. It's got the ingredients to reduce water loss out of the skin, but it's also very oil, oily. And the consistency is like it just almost, it's like softer than, than Crisco that's been at room temperature. It's really, really emollient. I mean, it just dissolves right right away. I have successfully put this on my face, although if you have acne prone skin, oily skin, you probably won't like that. It might irritate your acne, but it's been working out pretty well for me. Free of fragrance, and it makes your skin like really glowy and luminous. I'm loving it. Those herpes spots are all over the place on my monkeypox video. I just, um, I don't, there's, I, like, I know I complained to you guys about it, but I just feel like I, it worries me that someone is going to get scammed. I mean, it's obviously a widespread issue. It's not like something specific to me. Uh, if you missed that video, check it out, but don't engage with any weird bot comments. <laughs> um, another thing I wanted to share with you guys, by the way, when it comes to, I taught you guys in that video, if you didn't already know, how to report comments that are inappropriate or, you know, that are these bot comments. But one thing you also can do is you can see someone's comment history on my videos. Uh, so uh, that may help you kind of tease out if something is a bot because you can basically, it depends on the, it depends on the device that you're watching the video on. If you're watching it on your, like your TV, you can't, um, but if you are watching it on like an iPad or I think your computer um, or your phone, works on your phone, if you're watching it on one of those devices, all you have to do is um, while you're in the comments section of the video, if you actually click on that person's image, it will pull up their comment history if they've ever left comments before. So you can see what kind of comments the person left and that can kind of clue you in that it is or is not a bot. Like if it's the same comment over and over again, like a bazillion videos, you're like, okay, this is probably a bot. But if it's not, then you know, it's not. So that's another thing that you can, you can tease out. Anyways, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this vlog. I know it's kind of rambling all over the place, but if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>